there we go now. <laughs> That's the commute from the house to the garage. Down the stairs, between the snow banks. Oh, the shuggo tata. Bales. And that's down the garage. And uh, you want to see there's lots of snow left. We're uh, pretty spoiled with snow this year. There we go. Barbecue, not ready yet. Got the fireplace there. It lost the donut on top of the chimney, but still kept it around the uh, the top of the uh, you know the burning area. And uh, like I say, we got it pretty bad. Hey, my famous snow blower, it's still working. Try not to fall down. <laughs> There we go, that's a fair amount of snow we got there. Going to the garage. A little uh, pat down the way. I don't use that door too often. And uh, towards the house. That's pretty, pretty well packed up with snow. I guess some people got more of the Maritimes. I mean, they can... Uh, they can brag about the snow they got. <laughs> Boy, I don't know how Colin got uh, to winter with the... Uh, I think he's in the Gander area, like uh, from Compax Edge. I think they got more snow than we got. The year we got the most is the the cold. We got about, uh, I don't know, almost three, two solid months of uh, nights around uh, minus 20, minus 25 C. That was bad. I mean, that kills my inspiration. I hate winter. But uh, anyway, I just envy a little bit uh, Randy who's <laughs> bragging about uh, pruning fruit trees and uh, <laughs> the blossoms are coming on these trees. Nice, uh, <laughs> nice awakening of, uh, of uh, you know, like uh, the nature there is like, you got a pretty soft winter. Lucky you, Randy. Uh, here in Canada, we're still stuck with snow. This is the amount of snow we got in the yard. And But there's one thing we get here, is a sugar shack uh, season coming out. Maple syrup. I grew up on that. I mean, I, I love sweet. Mmm, that's delicious. Maybe I'll show you one, uh, one can. <laughs> that nice uh, nectar. Hi again, it's Pierre. Uh, welcome today. Uh, it's been a little while since I uh, put out something and uh, we're still working on the uh, camera crane. Today the uh, episode will be about making some kind of a collet to hold along uh, one of the poles that holds the uh, camera. And uh, it will look a little bit like this here. This is, uh, I just made the screw, put the screws there to help me hold it because uh, not very easy. So this is not going on anywhere, like it's just like tight on the, uh, on the pole. And it has not to damage the pole because it's a pretty thin pole. It's a, it's a broomstick pole. And uh, by loosening it a little bit, then you get uh, free, uh, you know, let's say free movement along the pole and uh, to give you a, s a slight preview of what it's going to be it's going to be mostly like a, like a collet you know just uh, uh, inside it's UHMW um, that, that just stops from you know like uh, squishing or breaking or scratching the uh, the poles and uh, we gonna have a few interesting a few interesting operations on this. We're gonna have internal threading, which is right here. External threading, slitting, uh, making uh, some kind of a nut pattern on the uh, on this ring here. Uh, 
things are going to be done on the dividing head, things done in the late uh, angles, because here we're going to make uh, angle in on this part and inside this uh, this collet ring. There's going to be an angle there too uh, in the bottom there to uh, you know make you know tightening uh, device for. Uh, for this, so that involves like many uh, many operations, many uh, many different uh, techniques that we have to master as a machinist, and uh, it's you know I thought I thought I was gonna be able to put it in one episode, but it's gonna be uh, part five uh, A and B. It's you know I don't want to put you to sleep, even even that's uh, I find it long, so I don't want to put you to sleep because I would sleep probably, and uh, in between. I'll show you, uh, you know, a few a few mishaps and maybe one or two little tricks in a short uh, in a short video. I don't know if I'll put it in between or just maybe uh, just right after those two, but uh, soon there. I'm working on this and uh, it's coming out soon. Okay, that's. Uh, I hope what uh, that you you know keep the interest and uh, that some things that are uh, you know like interest. Also, as, as interesting as it keeps you awake and uh, having fun to watch, as fun as I have to make the, the project. So, thanks a lot for being there. And uh, so, uh, here's the, uh, the presentation. Hey, we're back uh, in front of the machine. We're going to make uh, some blanks. And uh, after the blanks are made, and then it's easy to uh, do the rest of the machining. We'll try to, uh, we have two parts to do, so we'll try to serialize the production. Okay, let's make a big bore in there and uh, bring it to that and uh, get it ready to be a machine for the rest. There we go, that's a one inch drill. Yeah, nice perfume. Stinky uh, WD-40. Nice big chips. We're going to go for about, uh, I'd say a quarter of an inch more than what we need. That's good enough. We're about uh, over a little bit over an inch. We need uh, 800,000. Okay, there are many ways to uh, start an operation, but uh, on this one, my way is going to be to uh, get the, the smallest internal bore done before I do the cutout and uh, prepared for anything else. Uh, this being done, it'll be easy to just flip the part around to the uh, because it's going to be uh, inner uh, inner threads done with a groove uh, inside the uh, inside groove for uh, relief and we'll do the bore inside after I turn it around so that will avoid the uh, run out or anything and this part here I'll leave a few uh, you know a few thousands for uh, finishing uh, from the other side okay since it's uh, you know going to be uh, finalized later I'm going to um, take you know pretty uh, aggressive advanced cuts I don't want to uh, actually, I don't want to lose time on the uh, when it's not necessary so the um, tre you know the, uh, the finish on this for now will look like just like a, a fine screw finish and I don't, I don't mind about that because it's, uh, it's like I say, I'll take the rest out later. So I need uh, 1.285. So I'll make it like 1.250, and that will me leave, that will uh, leave me uh, more than enough of a finishing cut to do. Let's see, 50. 
see how fast it goes. Okay, that's it. That's good enough. Second part now. I am going to be in front. You got a better view this time, but... Uh, I'll show you the uh, type of finish that will uh, and, uh, see it's pretty uh, it's pretty rough but uh, it doesn't really matter about uh, how how finished it is you know and there's a shoulder there on the uh, on the part and I put it right in that jaw because like with aggressive cuts like that sometimes you end up pushing your part inside and, not exactly what you wish to do. <clears throat> do some parting. <coughs> I'll leave. <clear throat> I'll leave about uh, oh maybe I don't know a hundred thousand or even one hundred fifty thousand more. So if you uh, ruin the beginning of the entry or whatever, then you're. Uh, not so screwed. <coughs> I need uh, 865, so I'll make it. Uh, oh boy! I'll make it close to the chuck, though. That clears <coughs> at uh, 918. <coughs> One down. get sometimes like that cut up that just stalls you just plunge it in not too hard but just a little harder and it will clear uh, I just did a little uh, amateur's mistake I um, got to remove some of the uh, external uh, diameter on this part and uh, I just cut it off before it was time so what I did, I just got the uh, rest of the piece, you know, the scrap piece, made a, um, made an arbor, made a little shoulder there on the part that's going to go in the uh, the jaws, a little shoulder so it stops. And I'll show you how I um, achieved to make the diameter and the center this and uh, push it in. This is the. Uh, the big end, hope you see because the camera is not exactly always in the best position, but uh, okay, this is uh, in the chuck now, this has to be uh, turned down close to the uh, inside diameter of this, and uh, I'll make it oversized so I can just slip it in. Let me, uh, let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, I'll make you closer. You're gonna take my place for a few seconds. Okay, the way to put it in is uh, hold it there. It might be a little bit tight this time. So, oops. This surface and the end there is flat, so I push it in, but it doesn't go in very much with this. I'll take a little bit more off till it really gets tight. I hope I don't move the tripod too much. Yes, let me move you a little bit.
I'll just taper it towards the end, tiny little bit. <clears throat> that should be pretty tight. Okay. <coughs> there. This is going <coughs> this is going to do the job. We can <coughs> so we we can take some not super heavy cuts but good enough and it's very well uh, centered. Nope. We're going to take about uh, 75 uh, thousands. It's a pretty aggressive cut and fast. Uh, and the last cut for 25 thousands. Can't go with that advance. We'll kill the finish. This is going to be finish cut on this side. We'll do some polishing later if we do a few Mars on it. But uh, not much more than that. To finish the end. There we go. Nice clean end. I'm going to go on the press and remove this. We're uh, do the first boring. We're uh, going to bore this blank. There's a blank similar into the uh, chuck now in the lake, and we're going to be boring the first di inside diameter. First operation is calibrating, and after that, uh, straight bore. And we're going to do the, uh, the groove inside and the bore for the um, treading and then the treading. Let's go for it. Let's measure this. Okay, we're uh, 1241 and we need to be 1245, 285, sorry. Okay, let's go make this little uh, diameter. That's the most inside diameter. And give it a little measurement. There we go. It's supposed to be 285. Five four. That's pretty good. Okay, let's make the inside diameter now for the um, the treading. <clears throat> let's check it right out. This is excellent. 
get ourselves a <clears throat> this is where we start zero for this okay two seventy ourselves again uh, ten thousands for uh, for finish cut five seventy five deep five seventy five that's perfect <coughs> three eighty but it's gonna be 381 like the other one. Five seventy five. Okay, now we're making um, a groove to uh, make the relief for the treading after. Um, the bottom of this, it's going to be about 100,000 uh, wide. So I got this uh, the uh, boring tool, which is going to give me clearance. And this angle there is going to be a uh, pretty good relief for the, um, the actual tread. And I'm going to get this far edge at 575, come in for uh, about uh, 100,000 deep and also uh, coming backwards for about another hundred thousand we'll probably have to dig in slowly but uh, you know, i'd already uh, got my zero on the side 575 575 deep And it's gonna whistle a little bit. Going a hundred thousand. And I know I hate that noise as much as you can hate it. Coming back out a hundred thousand. operation okay 475 going back in that's gonna clean up the bore that's yeah, some kind of a spring cut five seven, five towards the center cleaning up and coming out this is the kind of groove it does in the bottom right here that's pretty clean. There we go. And the treading is going to go in this front part here. And that's what we're doing now. Okay, we're going for treading. Uh, you notice I left it at 29 or 30 degrees this direction. For internal treading, it's not the right side, I know. But I'm not using it uh, to plunge at an angle. I'm going to be using the uh, the cross light just to um, go at a right angle in it. Um, maybe you can see I installed there just it's loose it's just a pin it's a brass pin it can move but I'm not gonna move it because uh, yeah I made a mark in the back so this this moves here this little pin there uh, because uh, when you're treading bottom uh, you know bottom taps inside bottom taps you don't really want to uh, at the bottom so uh, that's that gives me the uh, visual indication where I'm going to release the uh, you know stop the treading and uh, now we're just trying to test them you know one or two thousands in just to make a, a test cut here going in pulling out 
and we're going to uh, see what we're uh, what we're in the treading uh, oh, there it is it's really 20 treads per inch that's nice now we're going again same method we're going like uh, 10,000 so yeah let's make it uh, let's make it 15,000 first cut is not uh, I'm running about uh, 20 25 rpms that's uh, for a close uh, a close shot in the bottom it's uh, close enough okay uh, treading oil we're in first one 15,000 second one will go uh, 25 Let's wait for the dial to come to an 80 number. That's it. <clears throat> Gotta make the third one 35. It's gonna be a little bit of a spring cut, so I'm not too worried about that. Wait for the entire number. reference we're not going in oh that's true just have to remember this uh, cross light is a diameter so I have to uh, take that into account I'm not uh, I'm not in the uh, radius there okay let's go got a way to go waiting for a whole number let's move a little bit back uh, going for 60 Waiting for a whole number. Okay, we should be not too far. It's looking like dreads. Okay, uh, one spring pass or just about, that should do it. Here when you're stuck with the... Uh, there you go. That's slippery. <clears throat> so I'll give it a few thousands. Okay, about that one to two thousand. It's gonna be a spring pass at the same time. A little bit of a cutting oil. Waiting for old number. Let's go. That's it. be pretty close to what we need
Okay. I'm trying not to get in front of the camera, so I'm not exactly at ease, but this is what I can call a decent tread. <clears throat> this one is done. Okay, an easy way to make a chamfer is to use the uh, cutting tool the thread cutting tool and just get a little bit on the side a little bit in and that's about the nice as nice as you're gonna get after that tiny square of sandpaper as tiny as possible so it doesn't grab your fingers and clean up the outside of the threads. I will clean up the crest and the, everything that's in there. <clears throat> this is clean. This is cleaner. And now that should be pretty easy to fit in the uh, sample I know I need to put it hair around the hole even now like hair is pretty rare this is pretty nice there's no slop it's just like just the maybe a few thousands of a play in there which is excellent because aluminum you don't want to uh, make it so tight that it's gonna jam that's a nice thread okay we'll uh, have to do the angle at the other end now uh, I'm going to make the angle in the bottom of the, uh, the bore here so when I get this in there the angle that's there will uh, start squeezing and those little uh, lines there that's been uh, dug into the uh, the part will allow the uh, it's gonna make like a collet let's say well I tied up this ring there it's gonna tight the uh, bar that's gonna go right inside this uh, collet type uh, fixture so I know the outside diameter here is 1.285 so I'm going to start 1 to 1.285 and I want to go right to the edge of the inside um, relief to be exactly 1.380 uh, in fact, not, not 1.380, but 1.440, which is going to be the outside there of this particular, uh, you know, like uh, part. So it starts to end up there just clearing the threads. I know the outside of this is uh, 1.285. This is... 1.285 put that in X going right down to uh, the other part it's got to be there we're starting to come back at a 20 degree angle and that's gonna get the uh, Thank 
fixing to do on this. having our 20 degree angle done uh, this is going like this here it's going to be getting tight now we're starting to get tight like this is going to be acting like a collet push it in okay it's exactly like a when you install a collet in a, uh, la in a uh, milling machine, really, milling machine, sorry, milling machine or something like that, that kind, see? Like, you can see there, this is coming on the angle, it's tightening. Now we're getting tight and we got about uh, just enough here to get it super tight when we get the uh, little uh, grooves that we're gonna be doing Next operation is these little uh, like square nut type uh, grooves in there. 